Thank you. So this is joint work with Jero Cavallo and Maxim Strodenko, colleagues who are at, at, at Yahoo. Um, so the question that motivated this work, which may look very different from what I'm going to tell you was the main result in our work, is how do you run a GSP auction when you don't have separable click-through rates? So Gagan told us, uh, I think it was yesterday, about how uh, sort of GSP exists and, and there's a separability assumption in, in, in the click model that sort of underlies a lot of the analysis of it. And, and I'll, it, if you're not familiar with it, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, cover it again briefly in, in a minute. But there's a question, if that's not true, how can we run a GSP style auction? And what does that mean? We have a few different answers. And so for the moment, we throw up our hands and say, we're actually going to punt on that question. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up with an implementation that's kind of universal. What we're going to do is we're going to compute the allocation curve that you write in all of your papers in theory. We're going to compute it directly. And that gives us this new algorithmic problem. Well, how quickly can we compute this all of these allocation curves? Can we do it in a way that's practical? And the answer is going to be yes. Okay. So before I get to that, I want, I want to just make sure we're all on the same page about GSP, separable click-through models and such. This should be familiar from yesterday if you were there. But, so we have ad slots, and we have some ads that need to get matched to the ad slots. Every ad is going to come to, to Yahoo, in this case, and say, this is how much I'm willing to pay per click. That's the bid. And we're going to match the ads to slots. And somehow we're going to decide a, a price that they have to pay. And that price is going to be done per click. The, the simplest model that, that what was first used is to say, we're going to assume that the likelihood someone clicks on an ad is the product of two terms. The first term, that we can call the slot effect, depends only on the, the slot. And the second term depends on the ad. You take, take the product of these, and you get the likelihood someone's going to click on the ad. So if you want to, you could think of the slot effect as, say, the probability that, that someone looks at the slot. And then the ad effect is the probability that the user clicks on the ad, given that they looked at the slot. That's one interpretation. OK. So with these, how does GSP work? What we do is we compute this thing often called a ranking score, take that, that ad effect times the bid. We sort by that, which has conveniently in this simple world maximizes our welfare. The price is as if we were running a second price auction for that slot, just what, what was the price based on the bid below it? So it's basically just the, the first guy pays the second highest bid, and then you need to adjust by the click-through rates to get uh, something that is the minimum bid required to hold your rank in the auction. So that, that's GSP. But do we believe in the separability assumption? Um, there's been sort of a number of papers that have tried to look at this. One intuition for why it might not be true is somebody like Amazon on a search results page, it really might not matter if they're shown first or second. Users have, you know, they have a strong affinity for Amazon. They'll click on it wherever they are. Somebody who's a small mom and pop shop might get a much bigger benefit from that, that premier placement on a search engine, say. So that, that's one thing that, that shows up in, in this work. Um, we took a little bit of data from na Yahoo's na own native marketplace. And what we show here, so this is click-through rate conditioned on view, normalized to the first slot. And what you can see is that the click-through rate on the first slot is much lower than the subsequent slots. One re reason for this might be the fact that that first slot shows up on the page regardless of whether or not the user was intending to look at the, the, the stream of, ad, of uh, news articles that includes the ads, say if they were just trying to navigate to their mail and click that link in the top corner. Whereas the second one only appears if they actually were engaging with that news feed. So this suggests that separability doesn't hold. And we need to figure out what to do in a, a general model. OK. So general model, I'll just say the probability of a click is pi ij. How do we run GSP? Now, first question that will be asked, certainly uh, in an AGT audience, is, well, what about VCG? Um, well, VCG has some pros. In theory, right, it's supposed to be truthful. Um, it's very popular in our, in our community, for sure. It's very elegant. And we're in a regime where VCG, even though it's known to have some problems sometimes, in this regime, it's pretty well behaved. We don't have compliments. We don't have any of this kind of stuff. So VCG could be, a, 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 could be something. Um, another really convenient fact is that the uh, VCG prices are already solution, dual solutions. So if you use a Hungarian algorithm or some other primal dual algorithm, you will get them for free. You don't actually have to do a whole lot more work if you're going to already compute that maximum matching. The con, which basically sinks it for a lot of companies, is that 
if you just take a separable click model, the prices from VCG are substantially lower than GSP. Uh, some back of the envelope math, maybe put them 25% lower, something like that. And for a company that's making all their money on a search ads auction, this is a huge issue, basically a non-starter. Um, you have to hope that advertisers will raise their bids afterwards. From our perspective, we need to come up with, a, with another solution. Okay. Uh, there, there's an interesting paper by Backrock et al. that looks at how you might transition them, but that's not going to be what we're going to do here. So GSP. How do we do GSP? What are GSP prices? Um, I, I offered this idea, well, what is the minimum bid required to keep your slot? One way to generalize that is to say, what is the minimum bid required to keep the same click probability? So I'll call that pure GSP. Now, if you think of, start playing around with this definition of pure GSP, you'll probably eventually end up in a corner of the world where you actually don't like what it's doing. And so in, in another paper um, with, with Jiro and, and Maxim and, and another of our colleagues at Yahoo, we, we use something that hybridized between VCG prices and this pure GSP to try to achieve cert other certain properties. Um, but this all brings us to a point that sort of for the purposes of this talk, I don't even know what prices I want to compute, but I want a big hammer that I can use to implement my auction. And if I can compute that allocation function, then I have a very robust practical implementation. I have a part of my system computes this allocation function, and then downstream I have a little bit of extra work to, to clean it up and get the prices that I want. Right. So the allocation function, again, this is what it is. Formally, it's the probability that the user clicks on I's ad Given, given the bid, right? So I'm gonna hold everybody else's bid fixed, I'm gonna sweep the bid of bidder I. Um, practically speaking, it's enough to just spit out a sequence of steps and heights. So there's basically gonna be roughly n, n pairs, so that this thing has size n. Um, in an auction, each one is gonna be associated with a price. Uh, just to, to illustrate how we might use it, let's suppose the bid was here. This threshold would be the pure GSP price. It's that next threshold right below the bid at which the, the click probability drops. If you wanted to do VCG, you could do it. It's Meyerson's integral tells us it's this area above the curve. So this would be a very useful object to have if we could compute it. And this brings us to our, our, the main problem that we're gonna study. I'll call it the matching with allocations problem. So what, I, what am I gonna give you? I'm going to give you n bids, and I'm gonna give you n squared click probabilities. I'm gonna ask you to compute the optimal matching and give me each of these allocation curves. Uh, and our main theorem says that you can do this in n cubed time, which is basically the same time required to, to run the uh, Hungarian algorithm to compute that matching. So there, there isn't any asymptotic overhead required to, to, to um, run our auction in this way. So what is the algorithm gonna look like? We're gonna start by computing the optimal matching. Once we have the optimal matching, we're gonna use a special graph from which we can use short cycles to identify particular matchings that have the following flavor. It's the pick, a, pick an edge that you want to include in the matching and optimize the rest of the matching around it. Then we can do a few upper envelopes and this will allow us to get the allocation curve. Um, I think it's easier to understand why we're doing all of these steps if we work backwards. So I'm gonna start with these upper envelopes and, and explain that to you and then go back to step two. If I think about a particular matching, any single matching, the objective value of that matching is it's linear, right? It's the click probability of I for bidder I times its bid plus some term that depends on the other bidders. So I could just draw a bunch of lines, right, for a bunch of matchings. And if I drew the lines for all of the matchings, then what does this upper envelope correspond to? It corresponds to, well, if this was bidder I's bid, what was the best matching? had the highest objective value. And since, th since these lines, the slope of the line is just the allocation probability, the derivative of this upper envelope is the allocation curve that I, that I want, okay. Um, now, of course, there are a lot of matchings, but all of the lines, so if I, it, sorry, if I, if I fix an I bar and a J bar, uh, so I'm gonna say that, bitter, that add I bar is gonna be matched to slot J, right, all lines, for bitter, for the, this bitter I are gonna have the same slope. So I can all, all I need to do is I need to find the one that has the uh, largest value of this. That's the only one that's gonna be in the upper envelope. 
So if, if I'm given these particular n constrained optimal matchings, if I, I can construct this upper envelope, um, it's a standard algorithm, uh, textbook n log n time, and we'll be in great shape. So the question then is simply how do we compute all of these lines quickly? Okay. To do this, I'm going to introduce an, an augmentation graph. Uh, this is equivalent to an exchange graph that Moroto used. Um, so first, let's, let's assume that I'm going to label the bidders so that bidder i is matched to slot i. And then I'm going to have a weighted graph with one vertex per slot. Okay. It's not a bipartite graph. It's one vertex per slot. And the edge weights are going to correspond to, let's suppose that I move the add from one slot to this other slot. Okay. So the wxy is uh, going to be the value that I was getting from, from slot y minus the, the, the value from putting add y in slot x. Okay. Um, if I have this graph, I can then look at a cycle. A cycle in this graph is going to correspond to reassigning a bunch of ads. It's going to be an augmentation. It's going to be a new matching. And the weight of the cycle, it's go actually going to be the negative change in value relative to, my, th to the original matching, which was the optimal matching. Okay. And I want the negative change so that I can compute shortest paths, not longest paths. So then I claim, and I, I won't prove it, but it's, it's not too difficult, the shortest cycle through edge ji will give me this particular best matching that I cared about. I cared about the best matching that assigns i to j. I can find it by taking edge ji and the shortest path through this graph. So just to formalize the statement, so we had a lemma says that if, you're, if you give me the globally optimal matching and, I want, and you give me a pair, i bar and j bar, I can find the optimal matching that includes this edge i bar, j bar simply by taking the shortest path through this augmentation graph and then adding the cycle, adding, adding the last edge to complete the cycle. Of course, I didn't actually care about the matching. I really just cared about that line. And so to get the line, well, I, have, I already have the click probability here. Um, and then I have the objective value from the optimal matching. And the objective value just changed by the distance along that path. So all I really needed was the length of this path. And that brings me to the, the complete algorithm. Right? So I start by running the Hungarian algorithm. And then I need shortest paths. I need all of them. Um, I was actually, I thought this was just something for introductory algorithms. I was actually personally surprised when I had to use it. Um, fortunately, this runs in n cube time, same as, as uh, the Hungarian algorithm. Once I have this, I have all these distances. I can, for each bidder, I'm going to compute an upper envelope, differentiate n squared log n time, and then we can go downstream and compute whatever prices we want. Okay. So, this is our main result. We can solve this matching problem in n log n, or n cube time. Um, if you, you have, in general, we have fewer slots than adds. For simplicity, I just assume they were all the same. If you only have m slots, you can do it in nm squared time. It's a standard version of the Hungarian algorithm and a, a simple modification of what I, what I told you. Since I approached the problem by talking about GSP, this does, if you really just said, I just want that pure GSP price, we can simplify it a little bit and get that GSP threshold simply as, as this max instead of having to complete the whole allocation curve first. Um, another ancillary result in the paper is we said, well, what if advertisers actually have a, a separate value for each slot? The version that I was looking at is one where they, they submit one bid. It's a single parameter world. So you can still define a marginal social choice function. It ends up being a partition of the space, and you can compute it quickly. The problem from our perspective is that it's not really clear what prices you, sh you should compute. Um, one simple version of pure GSP prices we came up with coincide with VCG prices, so we really didn't, we didn't get anywhere. Uh, and I don't have a good answer to that. OK, so to recap, we borrowed this abstraction that was very common in, in theory, but as far as I know, hadn't sort of been implemented in practice outside of uh, uh, some of our work. Um, well, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and compute the full allocation curve and use that as our basis for computing prices. Um, it's powerful and flexible because it allows us to compute really fancy pricing formulas if that's what we want to do. It also allows you to change and refine them down the road. Like if you find, well, I wanted to, to tweak it a little bit, reduce the sort of the, the marginal cost that you, you'd have to pay for certain things, you can do that. You don't have to completely re-engineer your, your, 
your uh, system. It's also practical. It's, we, we implemented it. It's fast enough to run, run in, in production. Um, another kind of interesting thing about it that, I, that, that is useful, um, it's surprisingly hard to reverse engineer an auction in practice. You have all this data in logs, and invariably there are some parameters that were not properly logged. Somebody was running an experiment. You didn't know exactly what allocation they were using. And so by logging all of this allocation curve at runtime, you, it makes it much more easy and reliable to, to do counterfactual analysis. So this is an interesting side effect in practice. Um, and then, right, then our result is you, can, you don't have an asymptotic runtime overhead of doing this. Um, so open questions, kind of a new paradigm for implementing auctions. What other settings can we efficiently compute these allocation curves? Uh, when might we choose to approximate it? Um, because if there's exponentially many steps, we're obviously not going to spit out an exponentially long curve, probably. Um, one of our other papers uses a heuristic to compute this. And then, of course, there's the question that I punted on in the first place, which is, given this curve, what, what do you want to compute? So, thank you.